Christmas, everybody! Welcome to the Christmas Countdown Show! You made it! You're here! We made it. We've all made it. <laughs> it is November 30th, if this if you're listening to this on drop day, which means we are one day away from December! We are so close. We've almost made it, folks. This is episode number 14 of season 3 of the Christmas Countdown Show. My name is Eric Peterson. I'm here with my very good buddy, Danny Jordan. Hola. We are coming to you live from Southern California. Hot, hot Southern California. It is hot. Cali. I wish I know. Not. Why'd you go hoodie again today? I love this hoodie. It is a great hoodie. It says Chicago on it. You are showing a lot of pride. A lot of pride in my hometown. But yeah, welcome to the Christmas Countdown Show. This is uh, our five through one of our top 10 songs about Santa Claus. Yes. So we're very excited about that because we had a very good list of 10 through six. Anytime we do songs. We love songs. Love them so much. We find like every possible <laughs> tweak we can put <laughs> to on talk a about title more songs. To talk about more songs because yeah. really we just want every record label's attorney to yes. have us on their radar. That is really our <laughs> our mission here. Yeah, that is true. Universal, you know, Warner, think, all of them. Yeah, I think a people like these episodes. They do seemingly. Um, we like these episodes because it's we're passionate about music. I think. Yeah, both of us. Um, and I think we're passionate particularly about Christmas music. I would agree. I, I feel like both of us enjoy music. We're definitely not like uh, novices to music, but I also don't want to speak for you, but I don't feel like we're like major music heads in mm. just like music in general. Right. I definitely listen to music. I listen to radio. I'm like, it's, it's an odd thing. It'd be like, hey, you like music? Yeah, everybody likes music, <laughs> right? But I think that Danny and I really specifically enjoy Christmas music, old Christmas music, new Christmas music, we dig the way that it makes us feel, the way that it fills a house when you're decorating and you're getting ready for the holidays. So bear with us because we enjoy these music lists. Well, think about it. Like when it is the holiday season, yeah. it feels like Christmas music in some capacity is is the background Absolutely. to your space. Whether you're decorating, uh, whether you're baking something, whether you're driving your kids to school in the morning or you're like going to a, a holiday concert yep. and or you're singing Christmas carols at church or whatever it might be is like Christmas is one or Christmas music is one of those things that's just part of the fabric yeah. of, of the holiday season. And I feel like What's great about music is that, you know, we learned this in our last episode, the one star reviews about, you know, Christmas movies. Yeah. Uh, is that like movies, like you may not be super into like comedies like National sure. Lampoons, or you maybe don't like Love Actually or whatever it is, but like music across the board feels like anyone can find a connection yeah. or enjoyment out of most Christmas songs. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, like I rarely hear a Christmas song. There's a few that I don't really care sure. for, but rarely do I hear a Christmas song where I go, what a piece of trash. Yeah, what a waste of my time. Don't ever play this song for me ever <laughs> right. again. Yeah. Um, so so I think that's why these music countdowns are so yeah. great, is it's something that we can all relate to. And it's fun, I think, I'm sort of putting myself into the mind of the listener right now, is that maybe the perspectives that we bring up or like little things about these songs that stand out to us they've never noticed before. Totally, totally. Or, you know, we've had so many people who've messaged us and are like, gosh, thanks for talking about J.D. McPherson yeah. or Jamie Cullum or whomever it is. I never heard of them until this show. I definitely get a big kick out of introducing a new artist or a new song to our listeners and yeah. people responding to it and really being like, whoa, that's so cool. Like, I always thought that was the coolest thing, even when I was in high school, if somebody would be like, hey, listen to this band. Yes. And you're like, whoa, I've never heard of that. Like, I respected that person so much for, like, introducing me to, like, a whole new world of thoughts and feelings yes. and emotions. And I remember there, because when I was growing up and I was very young, I listened to, like, R and B and like boys to men and stuff like that. That sort of stuff. One twelve, you know that stuff. <laughs> um, and I had no real connection to like punk rock or rock and roll in any way. Yeah. And I was at a Boy Scout summer camp, and I remember there was a guy. I wish I could remember what his name was. Um, who was like one of the older counselors, and I was probably in I don't know sixth grade, seventh grade, something like that. And he was like, "Dude, this is Green Day," and like played me Dookie, and I was like. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> and like I had been listening only to like Boys to Men and R and B and then I was like, punk rock is my world, you know. And I feel like it's been like a huge part of your huge world. Huge part of my ever life. Since. Yes. Isn't that funny? And it all comes back to this one, you know, camp counselor who was like, dude, you're gonna like this. He played me I remember he played me uh Green Day. He played me the Meat Puppets, <laughs> which is like <laughs> a, a funny name. Very odd uh, you know, they were like 
sort of influential in uh, Nirvana. Nirvana would play Meat Puppet songs. Okay. Um, he played me a little bit of Nirvana. And I think those were like the three big ones. But Green okay. Day was sort of my... And it's funny because now all the music that I even listen to to this day, I can track back if I really go like... Mm-hmm. You know, let's say I love Tyler Childers right now. He's sort of a alt country kind of Americana folky guy. Okay. And I like him because I listen to the Avid Brothers. And I listen to the Avid Brothers because they were sort of bluegrassy, which made me think of this band. Mm. And I liked that band because I was into this band and that band because I listened to Green Day. Like I can track the whole, like my whole sort of musical fandom and journey all back to like that one day where he was, I remember him sliding across the oh picnic table like, this is Dookie. And I was like, this is going to blow your <laughs> yeah. mind. I remember Wait till you see this kid. In my seventh grade uh, yearbook, there was some girl I remember, she was like a huge fan of Green Day. She wore like yeah. Green Day shirts to school yeah. all the time. And she like signed her name, like, you know, have a great summer. P.S. Green Day rocks. Yes. Like that. <laughs> Just the things that we like. She needed to let me know. Just let you know that, like, I love Green Day. You know, a fun game I used to play when I was younger. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I used to love to try to come up with like what would the opposite band name be for groups. So, like, Green Day would be like Blue Night. Sure, yeah. You or like Limp Bizkit would be like Stiff Pastry. Uh huh. You know that sort of stuff. Ah, Uh, Stiff Pastry. Yeah. Speaking of things that I, I'm circling back to, there was something that I wanted to talk about in a recent episode yes. that I didn't mention. Okay. Um, so, you know, we just had the Thanksgiving Day Parade, which yes. is like a big tradition. I don't know if it's like broadcast around the world. I would guess that maybe other At countries on YouTube. see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely on YouTube. Um, so if you're around the world and you watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but it was pretty darn cool. So, you know, I've sort of like, tease this a little bit and sort of talked around it a little bit throughout this season is I'm getting to do something that I've dreamed of doing Very cool. ever since the first time I went to see a Broadway musical, which was Mary Poppins. I went with my family right around the holidays years ago, back in 2009. And I remember sitting in the theater thinking, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. I want to help other people feel what I'm feeling sitting in this room right now because this is super special. And I didn't know what the road was going to look like and... 14 years later, I get to say I'm a co-producer of a brand new Broadway musical and one that I care a lot about the story of and I think is going to connect with a lot of people and I think it's going to change the landscape of Broadway. But our show was selected to perform on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and it was just such a special thing. Tell them what the show's called. So the the show's called How to Dance uh, in Ohio. It is based on an award-winning, the Peabody Award-winning documentary of the same name that premiered on HBO back in 2015 about a group of young adults um, who are all a part of this same like family sort of counseling center um, in Columbus, Ohio. Um, All of these young adults are on the autism spectrum and Dr. Amigo who runs uh, Amigo Family Counseling Basically, he says, I think we need to throw a dance yep. and sort of like to, to challenge these kids and help them to grow, you know, in terms of like their ability to communicate and to organize and work together and social experience, all that. And it's this really um, beautiful story, not just about the kids, but their families. And what's really amazing about our show is that the seven leads are characters with autism, but the actors who are playing them are also on the spectrum yeah. um, as well. And our standbys are, you know, and swings are, you know, who need to cover those roles are on the spectrum as well. And it's just, it's really amazing to be a part of this and to, you know, it, it's a really wild, you know, to think back to when we first started this show and talking about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and how it like is something I love watching yeah that now I'm like connected to it in a whole new way is, right. uh, is really special. So if you guys didn't get to see the, that performance, you know, just go on YouTube and, you know, or go to, you know, search how to dance in Ohio on Instagram and there's, there's clips everywhere to, to check it out. And we open on December 10th on Broadway. I'll, I'll so be there in exciting. 10 days, My which is crazy. Like, Dude, that's crazy. yeah, I'm still trying to decide like, what does one wear to like a, can I help? A, please. Yes. Please help me because I was like, I guess I'll just get my suit pressed. No, 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 no. Do I have you to need like? A new suit. I need a new suit. Need a new suit. I don't have a lot of time. That's okay. <laughs> Can you help me? Yes, please. Because I was like, do I like tie into like the colors of the show in sure. some way? Yeah, yeah. Um, or maybe like the, the costumes that are involved because you know it's all sitting around a dance. Like, yeah. should it be a tuxedo sort of vibe? Yeah. You think so? I think so. Okay. I think here's what I envision. Okay. It's a navy blue suit. Mm. With a uh, velvet lapel. Oh, yes. Okay. 
your shirt is going to be yellow because that's sort of the main color yeah. of the show, of the artwork, at least for the show. Yeah. But it's going to be ruffled, like a 70s ruffle uh, shirt. And then you're going to have a big navy blue fat bow tie. Oh, my gosh. I'm really excited about this. Where do I get these things? I will send you links. Because I'm guessing Macy's doesn't sell them. No, no, not at Macy's. No, this is going to be some ordering, but you're going to be able to get it in time. Don't worry. Don't oh, worry. and then I'll, I'll post some pictures yeah, in, yeah. in the Patreon group yeah. so people can uh, see me there. But yeah, I'll be there and I'll, I'll get to you know hang out with, with your old friend uh, from, yeah. from the Shrek days, which yeah. is exciting. and It's, it's amazing. So um, it's really surreal and awesome. And I just, I'm, I'm grateful for so many so many reasons and i'm excited because while i'm there i'm gonna go see the tree and you know rockefeller which they just lit yes. last night yeah which uh kelly clarkson hosted the special she's so good she's so great yeah i love her she i was reading about it um because i think she did her talk show was out here in la right but this last year she moved the talk show to new york right at 30 rock yeah, right? at 30 yeah. Rock, yeah so now she's like really in that 30 rock family of hosting all i'm sure she'll do an snl and all oh that. yeah i feel like her star is just continuing to rise yeah. and you were sharing with me earlier that um this was the 20th anniversary of her first performance at the tree, at the tree yeah. lighting yeah from 2003 so cool. after american idol Season isn't it wild how many things right now feel like they're in a 20-year cycle yeah. like elf yep just had its 20 yeah. year kelly clarkson 20 years yeah. i don't know christmas story 40 years 40 years yeah. which is tw- 220s you know 220s <laughs> um it's i, I wonder are we, does that mean we're about to start a new cycle of like all the things that were cool maybe. back then coming back around again maybe maybe i mean fashion is definitely that way elf too yeah, but remember they said they they can't do. He that. didn't want to do it. Yeah, oh, that's right. Will Ferrell because he read a script and he said it was like, eh, yeah, not that great. Because it's got to be, it's got to be so good. It's got to blow it out of the water. Yeah. And plus, you know, he got to do Spirited, which yeah. was super fun. And, yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, all things Christmas are, are happening. And uh, speaking of New York, I do have some Christmas news mm. to share. Christmas news. We interrupt our program to bring you this Christmas. I news. said that exactly the same way <laughs> as I said on that Christmas news. Oh, amazing. So we have one piece, or actually two pieces of Christmas news uh, that I want to share with you all right now. Uh, recently, Time Out Magazine did a story that uh, revealed that Brian Park is named the best Christmas market in the world, Whoa. which is amazing. And they were named this by uh, an organization called Planet Cruise. Okay. So there were a bunch of other like European markets. Now, I was I was surprised. I, I do believe that Brian Mar- Park has a, an incredible Christmas market that I've yeah. walked around a couple times. We've talked about it before, the ice skating. Yeah. But I don't know, like when I see all these images of a lot, a lot of the markets over in like Germany and Austria yeah. and stuff, yeah. like with the carousels and yeah. Ferris wheels and all this sort of stuff, I would expect them to beat out Brian Park. Yeah. Um, I but think there's a magic to New York City. Though. There is. You're that right. Is, that is undeniable, especially at Christmas time. Yeah. And I think that that, I, I obviously I don't know because we are Americans, so it's hard for us to speak for other cultures and other countries. But I think that even if you were from London or Germany or Australia or China, New York City at the holidays is iconic. Yeah, I do agree. I, you know, when you read into this article, it looks like Planet Cruise based its findings on six factors, okay, which were number of stalls Mm -hmm. and when you look at brian park like they have the most by a pretty substantial amount 180 stalls that's wild um the open dates it has the most open dates of any christmas market uh in the world or at least the top 10 list um the TripAdvisor ratings TripAdvisor reviews google search volume and instagram hashtag data so they really factored in a lot of stuff a lot of things but i think you are right is that you know so many people in the U.S. may not be able to travel over to Europe for the sure. Christmas market. So, like New York, is a great place to travel for the holidays, from the Rockefeller Tree to the Rockettes, all the things. Would you call it your favorite New York uh, Christmas market? I think it's the only Christmas market I've been to in New York. Mm. Yeah, the one that's in Columbus Circle is really good. I love that one. Where is it at in Columbus Circle? Is it in kind of just on the edge of uh, Central Park? Oh, is it really? Yeah. I'm going to have you to check You know that kind of out. area, like, so you have the circle that has yes. the Columbus statue, but then, like, just inside of the circle, there's kind of, like, there's a fountain-y kind yeah, of yeah, thing yeah. there, kind of all right in there they do. Where they uh, usually, like, rent bikes in the yeah. summer and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have to go yeah. look for that, because that's one of my favorite 
like parts it's of New York to here. walk through in the holidays because you have all those beautiful snowflakes that are hanging inside the shops yep. at Columbus Circle. Yep. And then you just walk all along Central Park South, end at Fifth Avenue, and you got the Plaza Hotel, yep. which is obviously, as we know, where Kevin to, you know, yeah. McAllister stays. And then you walk down Fifth Avenue, and you see all the beautiful yeah. window yeah. displays. The and then thing. you get down to where Rockefeller Rock is. Oh, it's so just that. I'm going to be doing it. Yeah. In a couple of weeks. Um, and then uh, also, I don't know how we haven't chatted about this yet, but uh, Mariah Carey is on tour. She is. For the holidays. Yeah. Um, the tour is called uh, Merry Christmas One and All. And it's been going on for about 15 days now. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, it looks like she is in Detroit. Then she goes to Chicago, Pittsburgh. Detroit. Detroit, <laughs> Michigan. Did I say Detroit? Yeah. You're like, she's or, in Detroit. Do you say Detroit? <laughs> Detroit. Yeah. Detroit. Detroit. But Detroit down to Houston. They don't say sure. Detroit. <laughs> uh, then Chicago, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, New York, Boston, Philly, Baltimore, and then back to New York again. She's playing MSG uh, multiple times. So if you've been dying to see Mariah uh, on tour, now is the time. It looks like she's you know going to a lot of places that people yeah. could make their way to, and you can hear her uh, maybe sing all of those like iconic tracks. I don't know. That, I, I was, was little, I was gonna say was something. that a little backhanded? I was gonna say something to the effect of you could go pay a bunch of money to sit and watch her recordings, or you could sit at home and listen to it. And it's probably the same. That's true, <laughs> but there's nothing like being there live. There's nothing like being, being there, there live. Live watching. And let's be listening. honest. Let's be honest. It's not like Mariah Carey can't sing anymore. Correct. She can. Her range is not what it was. Neither is mine. So she definitely works a little bit with a track, but. A lot of professional singers do. So not I, the end of the world. I do that regularly. That's right. That's I'm right. always working. With it. Part of being a semi-professional singer is always having a track <laughs> always having playing a track behind you that sounds you. better yeah. than what you're singing. Absolutely. Ask um, Millie Vanilli. Um, <laughs> uh, so, that, was, that was cold and I catty, know. and I apologize. Cool. 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 Um, all right, folks. I have a fun little game that I'd like to try with you. Ooh, Danny. I love games. Um, so... I saw this list. It was a map of the United States, and it was listing. Uh, this is from tasteofhome.com. Okay. Uh, they're a, an authority on food and desserts and things like that. Like us with everything Christmas. With everything. Yeah, everything Christmas. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and they said what the favorite Christmas treats were of mm. each state mm. in the country. Mm. And so I'm going to toss out a few uh, of these treats, and I want to see if you can maybe identify which state they would be associated okay. with i think i can do this okay i do a lot of traveling there are a lot of repeats so some of them will be uh uh on multiple places is detroit on there uh detroit is in the state of michigan okay cool. do you want to guess what michigan's is to start off the bat is that Fair how enough? we're doing it i have to guess what no i'll say what it is that okay. would be too hard okay um okay there are quite a few that have peppermint chocolate chip cookies Ooh. Which states do you think have peppermint chocolate chip cookies? Peppermint chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with somewhere that feels evergreen, uh, like maybe Maine. Maine? Uh, no, Maine is chocolate truffles. Uh, what about Oregon? Let's see. Oregon? Close. Oregon's this one, right? It's the one yes. below Washington. Yes. Uh <laughs> They're peppermint bark. Oh. So you were close. Okay. That's close. Okay. I get one more try. Yeah. Go south a little. Maybe south of there, Southern California. Or just California in California, general. I mean, peppermint like chocolate chip cookies. Okay. This is the top one. I would one. have never guessed that. Do you know which other ones have? Uh, Minnesota. Okay. Texas. And that's it. Okay. But peppermint chocolate chip cookies. I don't okay. know if I've How ever seen this? a peppermint chocolate There is a, a road almost through the U.S. Mm. that has pudding. As many uh, as one, two, just three, pudding? four, just pudding. Four states have pudding, pudding, and they're all in a row. Okay, I okay. I'm going to guess Tennessee. Yes, because we just had banana pudding that's there. Right. Okay, yes, that's good thinking. So Kentucky. Uh, yes. Okay, we're testing my geography now. This is good. Okay, um, might as well. <laughs> I'm looking at this. Would that be? Uh, um, should I go further north? Yep. So like uh Right above Ohio? Kentucky, but a little bit left. Oh, wait, left? Yep. Uh, that would be um, next to Ohio is Illinois? No. Between Illinois and Ohio is? Michigan. Nope, no, that's north. That's north. Uh, wait, between Ohio and Illinois is, what state is there? Oh my gosh! The poor Hoosiers. Wait, the poor Hoosiers are oh, just Indiana. like. Oh, Indiana! How could oh, you? Indiana. Yes. Indiana. I'm sorry. Okay, and then there's one more. 
South a little bit of Tennessee. Of Tennessee, is that Alabama? That would be, but that's not the answer. Arkansas. Nope. Georgia. A little left. Oklahoma. Le- uh, more right now. Uh, Louisiana. Yes, Louisiana. <laughs> there you go. Those were the four. Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Louisiana have okay. pudding. pudding. I'll do one more for you. Okay. Um, red velvet pound cake. Red velvet pound cake. It's wild that it's not something more common. Yeah. These feel very specific. Red velvet pound cake. This feels like... Would this be Southern, you think? Yeah. Um, we got a whole little... <laughs> okay. Is it going to be like South Carolina? Nope. They're fruitcake. Ooh, that's shocking. Yeah. But not so much because they're on South the Eastern Seaboard. South and seaboard. North Carolina are, are both, both fruitcake. Fruit yeah. Which I guess tracks because they're on the Eastern Seaboard yeah, yeah. in connection to like Europe, maybe yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, okay. So but you're is, close. So Georgia? Georgia. Okay. Red velvet pound cake. Okay. And then to the left is... That would be Alabama. Alabama. Okay. And then to the left is... Arkansas. Mississippi. Mississippi, of course. That's what I meant to say. Which one's Arkansas? All right. This is Louisiana. That's Louisiana. Isn't that... Mississippi. No. Is that Mississippi? Yeah. That's got to be Mississippi. That's got to be Arkansas. That's Georgia. Where's Alabama? It's one of those, isn't it? (laughs) Wait a second here. I'm, I gotta pull this up, is embarrassing. I gotta pull up a U.S. Okay. map here real quick. Alabama is next to Georgia. Okay. And then next to Alabama is Mississippi. So where's Arkansas? Arkansas is landlocked. It's above Mississippi a little bit and above Louisiana. I'm trying to pull oh, up that's a map that's Arkansas? Here. Cheesecake. Where's Arkansas? Oh, Arkansas is cheesecake. Cheesecake. Oh, okay. Okay. This is fun. This is good. I want everyone to pull out their maps and play along. With this, this is one. fun. <laughs> um, let me see if there's any other interesting ones. That you'll okay. Be like, where's that? What do you think it is in Hawaii? Ooh, that's a good question. I have to guess what it is. Yes. Uh, something with macadamia nuts in it, maybe? No. No? no? Okay. <laughs> good guess, though. Uh, something with a roll, maybe? No, it's a cheesecake, a flavor of cheesecake. Oh. Um, would it be... I'll give you a hint. Oh, wait, what was that? You're cracking something and pulling it out. Is that like an egg? I think I know what it is. That's so weird. Oh, is it? That's, what is it? What? I wish people could see this. I want <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm taking it. something and you're cracking I'm it apart. Coconut. Spinning it. Uh, I'm spinning avocado? it and breaking it. No. And then I'm licking one. Spinning half. it and breaking it. Yeah. Oreo cookies. Oreo. Is it really wow. Oreo cheesecake? Is the Whoa. number one favorite Christmas treat in Hawaii? Oh, interesting. Yeah. I totally thought you were going like a fruit. Yeah, that was of an or- some that sort was an there. Okay. There, here's the last one that's kind of funny. Washington's favorite Christmas treat, Skittles. <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. No. Who made this list? I feel like they're like, uh, let's just put a bunch of, of home. random taste stuff. Taste of home. Wow. There you go. I want everyone in Washington to chime in and let us know. Do you, are why Skittles, is, why are Skittles? Are, is it big up there yeah. or did someone lie? That's what I want to know. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that's good. Chris, you got a wheelie game for us today? I do have a wheelie game. Let's play a wheelie game. (laughs) So we have the trusted, iconic holiday foods wheel here. Great. I love the colors. And we're doing uh, overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. Love it. Yeah. We'll maybe do what? Like three spins, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do three. Yeah. Let's give it a go. Here we go. Ooh, spiral, spiral cut, cut ham. ham. Ooh, Ooh. Wee, I love <laughs> spiral cut ham. Oh, that uh, really small lunch that I had today is like, yeah. I'm like, ooh, I could really go been, for a it nice. It would have been better with some spiral cut ham. I want ham. like some spiral cut ham on some nice warm rolls mm. with some mashed potatoes mm. and some stuffing mm. and maybe a little gravy. Yes. Ooh, and just f- you fold the ham so it's real thick, so you get a real thick bite. Of you know what's great ham. about ham? Ham is good cold or hot. That's true. We yeah. talked about it before. You like, grab a little piece off and oh, just sort of walk around the house late at night. You feel so like you're good. being bad. With some, with what some are you doing cold out ham? There? Nothing. Just eating ham. Nothing. <laughs> um, I'm going to go underrated. Uh, I, I think it is yeah. well respected, right. but I don't think it could possibly be respected enough. Now, is it just straight up ham or is it honey baked ham? Spiral cut. I I think let's assume that it's honey baked, because it's got some maple. It's got some. I cinnamon. feel like we don't chat enough about how great the combination of that sweet outside rind is, salty with the salty ham in the middle. It it needs to be like a hero dish. 
Yes. It needs to have, it needs to be in a, a have, have its own era. Yes. Like Swifties yes. like to say. Yeah. So I'm going to say underrated. underrated. I agree with you. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We love Spiral Cut. Mm, love it so yeah. much. That was a good one. All right. Let's give it another spin. Candy canes. This is a good one to talk about. I agree. This is a good one because I feel like candy canes get plenty of press. So much press. Candy canes are one of the most iconic things. They have Definitely. their own decorations. They got you put hanging on, your yard. on trees. People put them in the yards. People eat them. They put them in drinks. Yeah. They put them in cookies. Yeah. They're they put everywhere. Put them in bark. Yeah. But are they all that they're cracked up to be? Ooh. Truly cracked up to be. To be. Yes. I. Uh, I'm going to go overrated. Like, I'm just going to come out and just say it. I would say I'm going to put them in between perfectly rated <laughs> and overrated. So I'm agreeing with you that they are overrated, but they're not like, oh, my God, candy canes are overrated. Right. I don't think it's that. But I'd say that maybe a little overrated. I think they're very overrated. I just Do you I, not like the taste of peppermint? I like the taste of peppermint. I just, I guess for me, like the shape of it, like the end of it, like which end am I starting on? Sure. Um, I don't very know. Sticky. They are. They get very sticky, especially once you have children. Oh. Like, oh, if you're I right. give my two year old anything that's like a lollipop it. form, like this just happened recently, where she's like, she really wants lollipops when we go to gymnastics, and so I'll give her one sometimes when you know if I just feel like she's earned one. But then I'll take her out of the back of the car about five minutes later, and literally the drool of the lollipop is all over her hands, all Everywhere. over her face. Literally, the little straps, you know, for the it's thing. It's like they take it and they press it against every part of their face. But what's, neck. I don't know how, and she'll get through it in like five minutes. Meanwhile, my five year old's like, nip, nip, and she's gotten through like, I don't know, 10% of her lollipop in the same amount of time, and my two year old just like devoured the whole thing. So I, I don't know. I, I think they're overrated. I think they taste fine, but they're just not easy to consume, I don't think. I don't know that I ever get like the way that we reacted to spiral cut ham. I've yeah. never seen a candy cane and been like, ooh, they got candy, candy canes. canes. <laughs> you know, I, so I think I'm going to go just slightly overrated. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. One more. Here we go. This is fun. Yeah. Oh, I know. Eric's going to love this one. <laughs> roasted chestnuts. Chestnuts roasted. That's the only thing they got going for them. Is they, they're a major player in a great song. Yeah. But beyond that, for me, I'm going over it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've ever actually had roasted chestnuts. Sure. You said you've had roasted like walnuts, pecans. Yeah. Cashews, yeah. almonds. I don't think I've ever had roasted chestnuts. Chestnut, yeah. Do they, Chris, do you know, maybe Eric, you know, because you know, you've spent a lot of time in New York in the winter, those carts that we've chatted about, mm -hmm. Nuts for Nuts, do they do chestnuts there or do they just do like the more common like cashews and I don't think that the nuts for nuts people do chestnuts, but a lot of the other carts that have like hot dogs and like yeah. pretzels and stuff will have chestnuts there as well. Roasted chestnuts. One thing's for certain. If somebody can make a great hot dog, they can roast some great chestnuts. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely mutually explicit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know these guys make great pretzels, yeah. which means they probably roast great chestnuts. Probably chest. good and they're probably roasters. huge Nat King Cole fans, yeah, yeah. too. Oh, my gosh, um, that's funny. But I, maybe I'll try it when yeah. I'm out there, you know, See in you like find 10 days. I'll try to find some, and maybe I'll put it up on our Instagram. Yeah. And but you got to listen to the song while you're eating them. Oh, yeah. And now, will that boost up my feelings about I'm them? I'm sure it will. Should I sit by a a, whole an open fire? Yeah, I think so. I need you to can. find someone named Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Have him nip my nose while I'm at it. Ah, my nose. Midtown, I could probably do that. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm sure you could find somebody named Jack that will named bite Jack you on the nose. Will nip my nose. Can somebody bite my nose? It's like, I Is your you, name Jack? I Keep you, moving. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> I'm Jack. I'll bite your nose. That actually sounds like a funny bit if some guy was just like, all, like he's Jack Frost offering like nose nippings. Yeah. <laughs> the winner. Uh, anyway, this is getting ridiculous. Um, that was good. Uh, Chris, uh, thank you very much for the over under. I like that game. We should do more of that. We should do that. Or not sure. over under. Uh, perfectly rated, overrated. That means kind of over under. It's kind of over under. But when you think over under, you think Gambling. betting on sports. Yeah, yeah. Before we get to our countdown, yes. uh, I do want to chat about a film that is coming out this weekend on Hallmark Channel, yes. which I'm excited about. And I think this is one of those films that's going to connect with a lot of Hallmark Channel movie fans because I, I feel it's in like. The pocket. 
it's in the pocket. Anything that feels like it involves like love and a connection to like royalty. Yes. Feels like it is right in that Hallmark Do you remember Channel the one movie that Last year, I think it was called the Royal Nanny. Yes. It was about the nanny that like had to watch the prince's kids or whatever. But and she was she, like an MI yeah, she was like, agent yeah, who was yeah. undercover or yes. something like that. That one was good. I like that. Yeah. I'm I'm excited about this one and we're seeing some familiar faces. Yeah. What's um, it called? So this is called a not so royal Christmas. A not so royal. But so I bet it will. Will there be, be royalty involved? <laughs> I'm sure there will, will there be. not be royalty involved? I mean, I think you throw the word royal in there. You have to assume we have experience. there's going to be some royalty involved. Uh, so this movie stars a familiar face who we uh, loved. I loved him yeah. in uh, Jolly Good Christmas uh, last holiday season, one, yeah. which remember they had the Windsor Wish, which I was like, is that a real thing? Is yeah. it not a real thing? And he had the the shopper, uh, Angie, who was helping mm-hmm. him you know, find the gift. But he's back again for another film set, yeah. uh, looks like, overseas and a not-so-royal Christmas. We also have Brooke Dorsey, who's in the film as well. Uh, basically, this is the way they describe it is tabloid journalist Charlotte is going to a attempt to land an interview uh, with a reclusive count. Hmm. Uh, In response, the royal family has a groundskeeper pose as the count since the real one fled years ago. Whoa. Now, what I want to know about this, Yes, is the count going to come back? The one that fled. The one who fled. And is the person, is the groundskeeper, does he look similar to the count? Right. Like, do you ever see the movie Dave with Kevin Klein? Oh, yeah. Where he's like the president, but he's like a presidential impersonator. And then he like goes to Dude, become the president. It's so wild you're saying this. Have you seen the hero art for this movie? No. The guy who's in it looks like... Kevin Klein? He does! Doesn't he look like oh, Kevin yes, Klein? Like it feels like it's got some of that Dave. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that was part of like Maybe. the story behind it. But I'm curious, you know, I, is, is he going to come back? It feels like he's coming back because that's not Will Kemp. No. In that photo and it's not kevin klein either it's some other gentleman who looks like them uh but i'm i'm excited for this one this one feels like it's got a lot of like mystery yeah to it of like and how's the count going to come back and then does she fall in love with the groundskeeper but right. then the count really does she comes. get to write her story does she get to write her story what is the story and does love get in the way i don't know there's so many things that are involved here um and if the count comes back and she falls in love with the groundskeeper but she marries him then does she not become a part of the royal We need answers. Hallmark, we need answers. We can't wait to see this. Well, good news is we're going to get all of those answers uh, this Saturday night at 8, 7 Central when a not-so-royal Christmas uh, premieres. Um, And what I love is like when I'm trying to like do research into like these films and like learn more about them, like we were just talking about the, you know, photo that I showed you, like the hero photo of them standing in front of this like beautiful estate. Um, All of this is available on the Hallmark Movie Checklist app, yeah. which has just been a huge uh, help for me all throughout the holiday season because 31 movies, Hallmark. as we've talked about, it's a lot to keep track of. Um, and I love that I can go in and favorite ones if I see like some art that looks fun or a title that looks sort of fun. Or, set a reminder know, for yourself. Set a reminder and write a review. Yeah. You know, we, we love sharing our voices with people. So I think that's a fun feature uh, in there as well. So if you're looking for something to do this weekend, which I'm sure you are, uh, make sure you check out A Not So Royal Christmas um, and we'll find out yeah. what's going to happen. Charlotte, is she going off the groundskeeper? Let us know. I don't know. I can't, can't wait. wait to see. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Check, Check it, out it out this weekend. All right, uh, Danny, I think we should get to the countdown, yeah? I'm so ready. Speaking of it. counts. Count. Let's get down. to the countdown. That was good. That was seamless. <laughs> I love it. Okay, folks, this is our five through one of top 10 songs about Santa Claus. Uh, as a reminder, as we always do, my 10 through 6 was uh, Claus vs. Claus by J.D. McPherson, mm. Santa Claus is Coming to Town by Frank Sinatra, That You, Santa Claus by Louis Armstrong, Santa Can't You Hear Me by Kelly Clarkson and Ariana Grande, Santa's Coming for Us by Sia, and now we're to my number 5. Mm. This is yet another version of Santa Claus is oh Coming to God. Town. And this is a song that I have talked about on this uh, countdown before. Not this countdown, but this show before. Right. And that's uh, Bruce Springsteen's Santa Ooh. Claus is Coming to Town. The okay. live version, it's so good. As I mentioned before, just the way that he says, like, you've been good this year. Oh, that's not many. Not, not many. many. You know? <laughs> and Clarence is getting a new saxophone. And just the way that he's, like, responding to the crowd. And he's such a cool... I mean, Bruce Springsteen is the boss. He's the coolest rock star, right? Yeah. And the fact that he would, like 
I'm trying to think of the right word, not lower himself, but like be vulnerable enough with mm. himself to enjoy Christmas in like a very lighthearted, fun way and not be like, I'm a rock star. I can't be, I'm too cool for this. You know, like <laughs> right. he really gets into it and really, you can just picture him like with a Santa hat on, doing the whole thing, oh, yeah. cut off sleeves, shirt, but still being like, the boss, you know. <laughs> I just love this song. It helps that it was on the um, uh, very special Christmas album right. that I grew up just sort of loving. Um, but yeah, my my number five is going to be the Bruce Springsteen version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Let's listen to a little bit of it right now. It's all cold down along the beach. And the wind's whipping down the boardwalk. <laughs> hey, man! all been good and practicing real hard yeah clients you've been you've been rehearsing real hard now so santa bring you a new saxophone right everybody out there been good or what oh that's not many not many you guys are in trouble out here <laughs> how can you not get just jacked up for that song it's perfect i feel like it's the the best way to kick off our top five yes. because i feel like it's set it has set the tone Yes. Um, all right. Energy. So high energy. All right. So recapping uh, my 10 through 6, uh, I let off at number 10 with Everybody's Waiting for the Man with the Bag by K Star. Uh, number 9, I had Santa Baby by Michael Buble. Uh, number 8, I had The Man with All the Toys by the Beach Boys. Number seven, I had Santa Claus is Coming to Town by the Jackson 5. Uh, number six, I had Here Comes Santa Claus by Bing Crosby and the Andrews Sisters. And at number five, I got to go with a song that I knew a very specific part of it from one of my favorite Christmas movies of all okay. time, which is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yep. But I don't, I never did the work to go find the song, but I found the song. Okay. And I want to play it for everybody right now. It is Hey Santa Claus by the Moon Glows. Mm. Here we go. Hey Santa Claus, yeah. hey Santa Claus, yeah. hey Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, yeah. hey Santa Claus, yeah. hey Santa Claus, yeah. hey Santa Claus, yeah. Santa Claus, yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah. Santa Claus. Yeah. I mean, That's good. it's so good. Any song, as you know, and I'm sure our listeners who've been with us for years know, any song that gives love to the bass in the group. Yes. I'm all about. Yeah. Like, yeah. he just gets his moment to shine. Yeah. Um, I love the moment when that song uh, plays is when, uh, when Clark goes shopping you know out at the department store and it's just such a funny moment yeah. uh within the framework of that story and i'm just so glad that i finally found it uh it feels like it's got doo-wop elements to it it feels like it's got a little bit of like sort of like the jazzy blues element to it as well um anything that's like four dudes singing harmonies yeah. always connects with feels me. like it's on a street corner yeah oh yeah like i could picture those guys singing that song outside of the department store yeah. uh and frankly speaking i hope i hear some doo-wop group yeah. somewhere this holiday season standing somewhere singing that song so uh i gotta give it up if you have not uh listened to that song recently uh go look it up it is hey santa claus by the moon glows I love that. I was uh, kind of unfamiliar with that song, but I'm going to add it's that good. to my it's list. It's so, so that. good. Yeah. Um, okay. So my number four song is another version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. <laughs> uh, number four, and this is going to be the Michael Buble version Okay, of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. This is your fourth one you said? This is, I think, my third okay. version but of we've it. got... We've got more to go. We've got more to go. Okay. <laughs> got more to go. Um Okay, now the reason that this one is so high is literally for one tiny little part of the song. Okay. But it's so good, and it's maybe one of my favorite moments in any Christmas song. So I'm just going to jump right to that part to play for you. Okay. Um, and you'll see why I love this song. Here we go. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming I'm in the big fat man with the long white beard He's coming to town. 
ba do ba do ba. Wow! Oh, it's just the the big fat man with the long white beard. He's just like walking that baseline. It's so yeah. good. As a former Barry Sachs player, I love a good bass walk down. Yeah. And so, again, we've already established that I enjoy the song Santa Claus is Coming to Town. <laughs> but they each have their own little nuances. And right. this one has that part. And I think I sing that little bit, like just a cappella as I walk through my day, yeah. at least once a day. At some point in my day, I go, you know, the big fat man with the long white beard is coming to town. <laughs> I oh, just, it's so good. I love it so much. So that's going to be um, my number four selection, Santa Claus is Coming to Town by Michael. So Paul. good. So good. Uh, all right. And my number four is a song that when I originally put my list together, it was number 10. Mm. Then it was nine. Ooh, then it was six. Then it was five, and it moved its way all the way up to four. Every time I would go through, because I've been working on this list, Eric, let me tell you, for probably like two or three months. I know. And I've been building this playlist on my Spotify, and every time like I'll hear a new song on the radio, or you know, I just would look another song up by Santa, or one would pop in my head, I just kept plugging them in. Can I tell you something? Interestingly, yeah. going off what you're saying right yeah. now, last night when I was putting my list together, I went on to Spotify, and I searched songs about Santa, and the only playlist that came up was by Danny Jordan. You <laughs> and your playlist <laughs> came up when I searched songs about Santa. Did you save it? I did. I've got four saves. So I did. One is me. One is one me. Is you. And I want to know who the other two people are <laughs> out there. They're like, wait, somebody actually did this? Yes. Um, but yeah, there's like, how many songs do I have? That's like almost two hours yeah. worth of songs yeah. about Santa Claus. And we'll chat more about them in the bonus. But did you? so do you know where I have things placed? I didn't look in any okay. kind of order. I did go through it just to see like what songs were in there. Okay. Because um, what I did is like I just kept dropping songs in and yeah. then I went on the desktop version of Spotify and to you can drag and order. drop yeah, and I just yeah. kept moving them around. And this song just kept climbing and climbing right. and climbing. And it's Sia. Santa's coming for us. You know, it was in one. it was in your top 10. Um, I, every time. It's just so darn good. Every song on that album. Yeah is feel good. You yeah. know, it's no secret to people who love our show that Candy Cane Lane by Sia is one of my... Sing it for the people. You know they want to hear it. Take a trip down Candy Cane Lane with me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. The, the people were missing it. That is the only thing about Candy Cane's that's underrated. <laughs> is Sia's version of Candy Cane Lane, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but funny. I just... The album is great. You look at the artwork for this... The album, like her with the red and green wig, it just, mm -hmm. and the bows in her hair, it it's just so feels so like like big and splashy and whimsical, and every one of her songs has that vibe to it. Um, so at number four, I got to give it up for my BFF. She doesn't know it, but we are BFFs. Uh, Sia, and that's Santa's Coming For Us. Nights are getting short and no hot chocolate. Fills the air and Christmas cheer does too Pick a million Christmas trees so lovely The joy this time it brings to you So good. You cannot listen to that song and not smile. You cannot listen yeah. to Candy Cane Lane and not smile. Snowman is like, it's not necessarily like a like a smiley bop, but it's just like, it's a take on sort of like a ballad at Christmas, but that is like about a snowman. I just love the quirkiness. I love how different it is. It doesn't feel like all the other Christmas music that we know and love. So I want to give it up to, to Sia. Um, and that bop, Santa's coming for us. So good. Strong, strong. I love that it climbed the charts. Dude. Slowly. I kept telling my wife, I was like, it's up to number seven now. Because <laughs> I sometimes I'll like debate, like I'll be listening to it and she'll like come into like the yeah. bathroom while I'm getting ready. And I'm like, I don't want to spoil anything for you. And she goes, this is one of the perks of being married to one of the hosts <laughs> as I get to find out soon. Ahead uh, of the time. Yeah, exactly. It. That's great. Um, all right. My number three. I can't believe we're up to number three. Wow. Is yet another version of Santa Claus is coming. <laughs> is that three in a row? That's three in five, a row. Five, four, three. It's uh, five, four, three. And so I have four total. Wait, what was your number six? Uh, number six was uh, Santa's Coming for Us. Oh, okay. I see it. Okay. Yeah. So I had the Sinatra version at nine. Oh, copy that. And okay. then I had five, four, three were all versions of okay. 
Uh, so this is the last one on my <laughs> list. Um, and this is the version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town by The Crystals, Ooh. which are a Phil Spector um, produced band. They had the famous song, And Then He Kissed Me, oh, you know, yeah. that sort of like very six, late 60s, early 70s kind of vibe, you know. Yeah. Um, and the reason I like their version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town is when I listen to it, I feel like I'm in a Martin Scorsese movie. Mm. I feel like I'm in Goodfellas okay. in some way. I don't know if this song is in Goodfellas, but it feels like it is during like right after they've done the Lufthansa like heist and they all yeah. got a bunch of money and it's Christmas time and, and Robert De Niro's like, what are you spending money for? I told you you couldn't spend money. <laughs> the, the fuzz is going to be on to us. You know? I just, it gives me such that like New York kind of like 70s late 60s kind of feeling i love it let's listen i don't think i've ever heard this oh you i'm sure you have you better watch out it's so good yeah this song is so good this is a great song oh my gosh oh i love it that is such a great version of that song. It is. It doesn't it feel like you're in like just like you're walking like it has upbeat energy. It feels like I got like a bag from Macy's and mm-hmm. a bag from Bloomingdale's and I'm walking down the street in oh, 1969 and, and I got long, a like trench mink coat, on. coat on or yeah. something. Oh, it's so good. Scarf, all the things. Yes. I got to add that to yeah. my playlist. I'm going to take some of your stuff and I'll do like what we normally do is I'll yeah. build a playlist uh, on our Christmas countdown page on Spotify and I'll put it in the episode notes so people can go uh, check out all of our Love selections. Uh, all right, number three. For me, I had to include this group on the list. This is another one that just kept climbing, mm-hmm. climbing the charts. Originally, my top five was a lot of classics. Mm-hmm. And then they started sort of shuffling down, shuffling down as I realized. Because in the beginning, I was like, well, I, I don't want to like insult the classics, you know, the, my, my, sure. my, the legends, the icons. But I was like, your what do I want to listen to the most? Yeah. You know, as we say on Theater Countdown, you know, your list, your life. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Just get it listed. That's, ooh, I like that. That's what Ben Cameron says on That's Theater Countdown. <laughs> I might have to steal it. So I'm going to go with a song by Pentatonix. Mm, yeah. They've got no love so far. Up on the Housetop. That's a good one. It is, right? It's so good. When we think about Up on the Housetop, at least for me, I feel like I've chatted about this before, is like I think about like junior high, yeah. intermediate band. Totally. Your white shirt, your black tie, or your red tie red that you wear tie, specifically yeah, yeah. for that with your black pants, yep. and you're like waiting backstage, and you're so <laughs> nervous, <laughs> and you got the snare going, you know, sort so. of the situation. Like that's what I I think I like most closely associate with this. It just feels like a dated song. Yeah, yeah. But when Pentatonix does it, and they take it over. They breathe some incredible life into it. So let's uh, let's take a little listen to "Up on the Housetop" by Pentatonix. Thank you. love that syncopation <laughs> ho, ho, ho. yeah uh but the part i love i think the most in that song is when they break it down they go we're talking about dash dance prince yes Fix and come. Ho, ho. like he gets all I, it's just <laughs> that song i feel like just it is high energy and it's like yeah. you said stank face yeah from the very beginning all the way uh through the end and i you know i think what i realized you know when i started putting this list together is like when you put this type of list you start just searching santa claus yeah but there's so many songs that don't have santa in the title title, that are about santa and that is definitely one of them so you can't have a music list on our show and not have pentatonic so that's why i had them at uh number three i love that um all right my number two yes when i was reading my list to sophie last night i was like what do you think is this a good list (laughs) as i was going through it and i was up to number two and i hadn't said this one yet i saw sophie's eyes getting bigger and bigger like where are you going to put this song? It better be near the top because it's a favorite of ours. Can I guess? Yeah, yeah. What do you think it is? Is it Harry Connick Jr.? Not in this slot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is by Megan Trainer. Oh. And this is I Believe in Santa. It's oh, the one that goes, yes. Santa is coming. Santa is real. <laughs> oh, it's so good. 
It's just I don't have that such, on this playlist. Such a bop. Oh, I gotta add. What's it called? Santa. I believe in Santa. I believe in Santa. How did I not include that and on this playlist? Let's give people. You know what's interesting is when I searched Santa. Yeah. And I was just looking at all these songs. I went down very, very far on the Spotify list with just the word Santa. See what would come yeah. up. Yeah. And I never saw this. I had. I knew. Like I had to search it out. Santa Megan Trainer to find it. Do you think it's because Santa is at the end of the title? Maybe. And they default to like that, Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, All maybe. those that you know. Yeah, I don't want to spoil any others about that might like be coming up. Santa Clara but. and Santa Monica. And, you know. <laughs> um, all right. This is I believe in Santa by Megan Trainer. Get ready. Oh, to I'm ready to dance. dance. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh my so gosh. good. You know what it feels like? A song that would be like in a Bond movie. Yeah. Like how epic sort of the start of it is. Yeah. Like if there was like a Bond like Christmas sequence. movie, I feel like that. That I would see. 100%. Hallmark Channel needs yes. to do a Bond Christmas movie. What would it be called? Um, uh, double O... Double O oh, December or like Oh gosh, um, that's a good question. Double O Seven. Seven, uh, heaven, seven double heaven. Double Heaven. When I see their smiling faces smiling back at me, seventh heaven. Seventh, uh, <laughs> but would it like all the Bond movies have like um gold they're all they're like always golden a eye little, and uh, little punny, a little tongue in cheek. Yeah. Uh what did, what was the one where he got the Casino Royale? Yeah. Um We'll workshop it. We'll, we'll yeah. think about if it. If you have an idea yeah. of what a Bond Christmas movie should so, should be titled. A very Bond Christmas. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good there. Yeah, that feels pretty I good. It. I was trying to think of something that come off a of Bond where it's like yeah, a, yeah. a pun, like a Bond Bonds or um, Once a Bond. Uh, <laughs> once a Bond a time. There's something like that, you know. Once a Bond a time in the North Pole. <laughs> That's good. That song is so good. I can't. Yeah. I didn't even think to put that one on the list. Good. I just added it to the the playlist good. that four people have saved, uh, including you and me. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. This next one. This was one started out like higher, like more like eight nine at the beginning, mm-hmm. and just kept climbing, just kept climbing. Uh, and that's an artist that I really feel like I haven't talked enough about on this show. And it's Elvis Presley. Mm-hmm. The song Santa Claus is back in town. Oh, okay. I have a different Elvis one in my bonus. Yes. This one, oh my gosh. Let's just play it and then yeah, yeah. let's talk about it because it's so good. Christmas. Oh, this is a great Christmas. one. Yes. Yes. Christmas. Christmas time for the baby. And the snow is falling on the ground. Christmas. <laughs> now, is this the one that's in Christmas Chronicles? Ah. <sighs> It's in a movie. I know it's in a movie for sure, but it wouldn't be. Maybe you, is you it at keep the top? talking. I'm gonna look. Is it, it up. at the top of the movie? I'm thinking when he's in jail. Oh, and does he? And the one he actually sings that Kurt Russell yeah. sings. You might be right. He sings. I, I've only seen the movie once. I got to go back and oh, watch it, and watch uh, it. Uh, again. But. Elvis's Christmas album is just so darn good. Yeah. Um, you know, we were just down in Memphis recently doing the St. Jude thing, and I really wanted to go to Graceland. And But then I was looking, did you know that Graceland does like a specific, like they deck the whole place out for the holiday Ooh, season? I did not know that. And I, when I was talking to somebody down there, like, oh my gosh, like you have to book it so soon because it is the most popular thing. Like people travel from all the world, really? around the world to see all the, the trees that they put in the house and the lights on the house and all over the property. Um, that album by Elvis is so darn good. And I just, I love the way the opening of the song sort of feels a little gospel at the top, but then it just gets into this like blues rock. And I just feel like you are hearing like Elvis's true essence and his true voice, uh, shining through in that song. Love the music, love the arrangement, love the performance. Uh, so that's why it's my, my number two. I love that. Um, did you find? I didn't. I found the one that he did with Darlene Love in the second movie, but I'm trying. Okay, to 
Santa Claus is back in town. I'm just going to type it into Google here real quick and see if we can find anything. Okay, so I found some movies that the song okay. appeared in. Uh, it was in Iron Man 3. Okay. Fred Claus. Nice. Miracle on 34th Street, the version with Richard Attenborough. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a movie called Crazy, um, all capital C R A Z Y. Uh-huh. Uh, the Long Kiss Goodnight, Bad Santa 2, and The Christmas Chronicles. It says it's in there as well. So it must play. Maybe elsewhere in, in, it, yeah. in the song uh in the movie but uh it's it's amazing obviously elvis is an absolute icon um and i just love that song so much that's my my number two santa claus is back in town i love that all right where to my number one we now it. i could have gone with this song Oh my gosh. <laughs> Santa Cow. <laughs> I could have Frankly, gone with I'm that. I'm shocked that it's not your number one. <laughs> and slightly disappointed. I know, I know. I, I thought about it, and I'm sorry, Rob Barry Jr. and uh, Terry Asau. Uh It's number one in my heart. But I felt like I had to be respectful. Asau? Do you think that was a stage name? E S A U. Because a sow. A sow? That's got to be a stage name. I just thought of that. All these times you've said that, and because a sow, a sow, yeah, could be a cow. Mm. Um, All right, but this is going to be a Harry Connick Jr. song. Okay, you know I love Harry Connick Jr. You know I love this album in particular of When My Heart Finds Christmas. And on that album, this might be my favorite song on that album, just in general. Let alone that it's about Santa Claus. Yeah. I love this song. Whenever I get asked to perform at like a benefit or a Christmas concert or anything like that, and they say, hey, can you sing us a Christmas song? This is usually the song I sing because, A, I love it. It's fun to sing. I think I sing it well. And it's also not super well known. Right. So I kind of like to like give people like, oh, I've never heard that song before. Uh, and that's It Must Have Been Old Santa Claus. <sighs> so good. We'll listen to just a minute of it. But if you've not listened to this whole thing, because it's a very story-driven song, so oh, yeah. you really should listen to the whole thing uh, if you've never listened to it. But here's here's a little bit of It Must Have Been Old Santa Claus. I think I saw old Santa through my window Christmas Eve. My eyes were really droopy, but I really do believe It must have been old Santa I saw his big red head And I know my mom and dad can't buy like that Go away I know my mom and dad can't fly like that oh. boom, boom, boom. It's wow. so good It's basically, if you've never heard this song before It's about uh, a little kid who doesn't really believe in Santa And he thinks it's his mom and dad who are playing Santa Right. And then one day he sees the sleigh fly through his window Land on his roof he goes up, he rides all around town, yes. sees all of his town and his school and his movie theater of his town, and he has this great time, and Santa gives him his hat. It's yes. so magical. It's just so joyful and happy, and I absolutely adore that song. Mm. It was easy to put that number one <laughs> on my list. Uh, it must have been Old Santa Claus by Harry Connick Jr. Is there a music video for it? Because it feels so, like so. it just lends should. itself Somebody to like a one. really great story. You know how people have been making music videos of the Sinatra, where they're like yes. animating like Dude, Sinatra? they're incredible. They should do one of those for It Must Have Been Old Santa Claus. I wanted to like do a countdown on the show that was like, christmas music videos but i was yeah. like it's so visual i feel like and people aren't as familiar with it as they are like with christmas movies um but yeah i actually i originally had it in my top 10 but i was like eric's gonna yeah. have it you know it was, i was gonna do i don't it, need yeah. to have it on my list yeah. at all it'll be represented uh all right so we've reached uh, that point where i'll reveal my number one but before i do that want to remind you guys to subscribe if you're not already doing so on apple spotify wherever you get your podcast please make sure you smash that subscribe button you can also follow us on social media at christmas countdown show on instagram tiktok threads at xmas pod on the x and if you want to watch the full episodes which are super fun because yep. i will cut in those music videos from time yeah, to yeah. time when we wow. do the music uh countdowns uh, you can go to youtube.com slash countdown network to do that uh, and if you love what you're hearing please make sure to rate and review and if you want even more countdowns uh please make sure to check out our other spinoff show disney countdown uh and subscribe to our bonus episodes Absolutely. so you can get uh even more uh fun all right so my number one I think you are going to approve mm. of this pick. And I was kind of shocked 
that I put it here. I put it at one and I was like, it's going to come down. It's probably going to end up around like three or four. But I kept moving songs around and I was like, this song just makes me feel so darn good. And it was like hard. Part of me was like, how do I not put a Sinatra or a mm -hmm. Dino or a Bing at number one? But I'm going JD McPherson. Santa's got a mean machine. That's a good one. It's such an incredible song. And it's just like, I kept trying to like, I was listening to all the songs in my top 10 over yep. and over again. And I was like, can they like, can they surpass it. surpass it? Can they unseat it? And it just wasn't happening. I kept listening to it over and over again. I was listening to it on my playlist. I put his out his vinyl on the other night. And every time that song comes on, I just groove, man. Yeah. And I'm just like dancing around the house. I'm dancing in the shower. Wherever I'm at, when that song comes on, it immediately makes me want to move. And I want and I just want to give love to JD because I think Socks is such a phenomenal album and you know we talk about all the classics but i want to get as many people to go buy this vinyl yes. stream this album as many people as possible Make him because, huge because it is so darn good yes. it's so darn good um so let's take a little listen to santa's got a mean machine by jd mcpherson I mean, come on. It's that so just good. I I I can't imagine anyone out in the world listening to that song and being like, nope. Yeah. That's, one star review. <laughs> that's trash. Yeah. How dare he put that at number one? Never. And if you don't like it, I want to know I want to know why. Yeah. Um, because it just is feel good. The piano's great on it, the song guitar's not good. <laughs> not make me happy. Me no likey. <laughs> me no likey. Uh Many people, including me, <laughs> including me, dislike dislike this song. No, it is incredible. JD's uh, phenomenal. I'm so grateful that you introduced him to me. And we should the show. we should reach out through Instagram to JD McPherson because I feel like he's not that huge right. of a star. And if we say, "Listen, man, we've got this Christmas podcast, and we've been talking about you for three years <laughs> about how great you are," come and just tell us a little bit about we how you made to make socks. that happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna send him a message. Let's tonight. do it. Let's make Let's it happen. Wouldn't happens. that be cool to have him on the finale oh, this season? Cool. I mean, we had Howie Mandel. If we can get Howie Mandel, I feel like we can get. We had Rob Baird Jr. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I mean it, where do you? Doesn't get much it's all higher down than that. Exactly, there. right? <laughs> all right, folks, we've done it. We have reached the end of our top 10 songs about Santa. We loved this list. We hope you yeah. enjoyed it as well. Uh, if there's any songs that you feel like we missed, make sure that we Chris missed. We, we don't Christmas. say that anymore on this show. If there's anything that we Chris missed, <laughs> make sure you uh, send it to us in a DM or a message or in a review. We're so appreciative for all the time that you guys spend with us and the, the love and the support that you've given us. So, yeah. Uh, Thank you for that. We uh, we love you. We really, really, we really, do. really do. And yeah. we are, folks, we are in a matter of hours heading into December. So this is exciting. Depending on when you're listening to That's this. That's right. We might, it already, might already be, be December. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but we are going to close this episode out how we always do by saying a very simple and a very loving and a very heartfelt Merry Christmas. And happy holidays. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.